Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Office Hours. We are talking to our amazing community and business members, and today I am in Vancouver, hanging out with Cardinal with Meredith at the Incredible Cabana Co-working Space, which if you are in Vancouver, you absolutely must check out, or if you ever travel to Vancouver and you need a place to get shit done, I highly recommend come visit. Come visit. It's amazing, and we've got some exciting news about uh some partnerships and events that we're going to be doing together too. So that's fun as well. So it's fun to chat today. Yeah, Thanks I'm so glad in. to have you. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Cabana and why you chose to build a place specifically for women. Yeah, so Havana sort of came out of my life experience. I was in a career that was fantastic. I was provided a lot of opportunities, but I didn't have a lot of supportive women in mm -hmm. my work environment. And then I started hiring a team under me, and I found so much joy in working with them, and they were super supportive of me. They understood as a boss that I wasn't perfect, and I had this great relationship with these women. And when I was ready to move on from that career, I really wanted to continue to bring that about with women so that we could all have that experience in work. Because the contrast between those two uh, experiences and, and not having that fostering those relationships from a top down for me and then being at the top and fostering them downwards was so stark that contrast and I was so unhappy in the one side and then so happy with the other that I was like I got to make this yes. more easy for everyone yeah. and that's where it came from and you can tell from the energy and the way that you're embracing it oh, I, love, I love that you've done that um, so for women in business, what is your number one piece of advice specifically for women? Just one. Just one. One. Number okay. one. Uh, really to be your own cheerleader, mm. to believe in yourself and to speak up for yourself. Oh, I love that. My screensaver is actually be your own hype girl. Nice. And yes, exactly. one of our speakers said that at, uh, at one of our events in Calgary and ever since then I'm just like oh my gosh that is so good because if yeah. you can't be your own cheerleader how can you expect people to be around you right so spot on really great advice um building a community is 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 very essential in both business and life but how do you make time especially if you're an entrepreneur uh and you're hyper focused on your business on building your community so that's sort of the other piece on why I landed on co-working mm -hmm. um being a huge fan of efficiency, you can do two things at once, right? So you can either build your business and then book in your calendar all these networking events. So you're building your business from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. And then at 6 p.m. you go off to this networking event and you do that <laughs> from 6 till 8. And then you come home and you try to not drink too much at the networking event so that you can get another couple hours work done at home. <laughs> do you follow me around? <laughs> right? You, yeah, you know that I day. You know what that it. day looks like. Or... You can have a co-working space. You could be a member of a co-working space. You can come in. You can work on your business. And then when you stop to have a cup of water, make coffee, go make lunch, yes. you have people around you that are also doing what you do, building a business, yes. interested in talking about business, interested in talking to you. They're also taking that break. And you can have that socializing happen. Exactly. You can network. Yeah. You can promote. Do it all together at once so you don't have to be doing everything separately. I think it's mm -hmm. such a genius idea yeah. to be efficient and where you put your energy. I agree. And then you have this really organic energy as you're also working mm -hmm. throughout the day mm -hmm. where, like you said, like you're just grabbing a cup of water, right? But those can turn into these really meaningful connections, really valuable business opportunities. You know, find out what, even something as simple, especially when you're just talking about women, like, hey, what, like, uh, project management software do you use? Like, those kinds yeah. of things are so, so helpful. Knowledge shared. Yeah. It's unbelievable how much knowledge gets shared. Exactly. And you guys do events as well, right? Mm -hmm. So why did you choose to also offer events as part of the co-working offering? Well, I think that we can all, well, I'm a lifelong learner, mm -hmm. so I love to learn. So maybe it was par partially a little bit selfish that I'm just like, I want to see what other people are doing and what, what new can I do yeah. and figure out. Now I have this cool space. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. Um, but as entrepreneurs, you have to, ta particularly at the beginning, you have to tackle everything and mm -hmm. nobody knows everything and nobody ever will. Like, you will never know everything about any single thing. Mm -hmm. So just being able to pair, again, being efficient. I work here. I network here. 
I learn here. Mm -hmm. So it's just a nice, well-rounded offering. I love that. Um, okay, authenticity. So this word, authenticity, mm -hmm. uh, you call authenticity your not-so-secret weapon. But what is your advice on standing in your true, real self when sometimes wearing a mask and seeming like you're busy all the time? What, is, it what is my to secret to yeah, standing like in my true self, or what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean to you first? Like, like the mask you wear, right? Versus just being yourself. Yeah, I think the difference is, and where when you know you're truly being authentic and can be authentic is if you stick to your values at times of stress. Mm. And so that, to me, is ul the ultimate of you are authentic. And when I say that my authenticity is my not-so-secret um, secret weapon, it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek because I am ex I'm, I'm sometimes too honest. So I really walk the line of oversharing, like a very, <laughs> very fine line. But I really find a lot of value in that. And I find people are relatable when they are closer to that line. Right. And... Relationships, you can't get in there. Relationships are so important. So I just find that being open and being able to be relatable is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think in through that through those honest conversations, that is where you find like the real. That's where true connection comes from, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hate people walking around being like, "Oh, I'm really funny," and it's like, "How are you? How are you really?" And you start a conversation about, uh, "Got in a fight with my mom this morning." And then you've got that immediate connection of someone like, oh, my God, like, my mom and I are, you know, having this challenge right now, too. And I think that's the perfect use of word, that really great connection that you're having. So yeah. I admire and that. time and place, right? Yeah. Like, you don't need to say that at the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> to someone you're just meeting. <laughs> but if you're, like, in the networking environment, mm -hmm. if you're talking to somebody who you think you would like to see again and it's not just I'm buying something and we're making chit chat, I think it's super important. So yeah. time and place. Time and place. Time and place. What do you use for, what are your kind of like favorite tools to get shit done? Uh, turning the sound off on my phone is just easy. Do not disturb. Qu quick, easy one. Just turn that sound right off. Um, I really like to plan out my week, and this is so dorky. Um, at the end of the week, on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday, I will think about what I've got coming up in the week. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a an amazing paper agenda. I still oh, yes. do. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I still do the paper. I have it on my phone as well, but I do the paper pencil agenda. or pen. Pe I love pencil. Mm. Oh my gosh, a sharp pencil is doesn't matter. Um, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Not important. We don't need to get into my <laughs> love of that. But I have this amazing agenda, and so it has your seven days, but it has a column down the left, and it has some writing space down at the bottom. Mm. And so on the column on the left, I write everything I want to get done that week. In the actual day planner part, I write all of my hard appointments. Mm -hmm. And then as the week goes on, I start moving them from the left-hand column under the days where I want to tackle them. Mm -hmm. And that really helps me. Um, and Because then every day I just can come in, open up my agenda, go, oh, yes, these are the things that I was going to. Yeah, your top rocks. Get, just get going. I also have really committed to doing my creative tasks as my first thing. Yeah, so I'll I'll scan my emails to see if there's something urgent, like truly urgent. Yeah. And if not, then I want to do all of my creative stuff top of the morning. Okay, so what is creative stuff for you? Whether that's crafting a content marketing piece, writing a blog okay. post, or, you know, getting into Canva and, like, right. designing whatever it is I have to design. If that's doing my Instagram content planning, it's doing that. Um, and basically... Just about anything but emails. Yeah. I don't want to do emails yes, first. I hate them. And I can I have no problem getting through them, but I will once I've gone like it takes energy, it takes effort, it's a lot of thinking, there's some planning. I can do that at the end of the day. Yeah. It just becomes very reactionary. Like you could sit at your computer and you could respond to emails all day or you could do something that is you know, which is the the business goal. Yeah. Right? So I like that. I also find emails there's a little there's a little lack of control because you can't tell what's coming in. And so you don't know, you know, maybe there's good news, maybe there's bad news. Mm. And if it's a bad email day, <laughs> and I start my day with, oh, I got some bad news in my email, you know, that's not setting me up for success. Mm. Yeah. So if I can do my creative pieces, there's, it's a bit of a controlled environment. 
then I've already succeeded for the day. I've got a couple of check marks on the books and then I can look at the rest of the emails and if something bad comes out, it's not the end of the world because I already did these other things. Hey, I love this. This is great. So start with the creative things. Uh, take the, like on the weekend or Sunday night or whatever that is, setting yourself up for success by making a proper plan and mm -hmm. figuring out the main priorities for the week and actually putting them into the calendar. That's yeah. one of my, I think those, yeah. those are really great tips. Uh, you're coming up to your one year anniversary. Which is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what have you learned this year about business, about co-working? Okay, so here's the thing. I was I am the typical entrepreneur that's like, yes, that happens for everybody else, but it's not going to be my story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everything they tell you is true. It takes longer than you think it will. It costs more than you think it will. That is for sure the biggest learnings. Mm -hmm. um, personally, how, how I, the things that I've learned about how I need to work, um, I need to take more time mm -hmm. because I can actually make those short timelines, but I shouldn't always. Mm -hmm. I really benefit from taking a little bit more time. Um, outside of that, other big learnings. To celebrate celebrate in the moment. Celebrate your win. Celebrate the one year. Cause I was, that was my next <laughs> question. What are we doing to celebrate the one year? Uh, so true to form, haven't quite learned that. I don't have a plan. I have a intention to celebrate the one year. Yeah, There'll good. be something. There'll yeah. be cupcakes or something. Yeah, high fives all around. Okay. We're going to have lots of fun. Okay. For sure. Uh, we're going to take the next five questions into the extended cut, but before we do that, I do want to share a really exciting partnership between Novato and AC, and that is that we're going to do a core membership. Both of us have really aligning values of bringing women together, of creating community, and really just helping women lead their best life in business and in family and work and whatever that looks like. Um, and so you have the opportunity to join both Ace and Novata. If you're living in Vancouver, and you're not on the fence about either of our communities, now's the time to join forces. We're also going to be doing some events with Carvana as well. So you can expect something in the business and leadership space, kind of workshops to how to, uh, how to, you know, just learn something, <laughs> learn something, whether that's in the creative space, business, something like that. And then also uh, some really inspiring tips and empowering conversations um, about love, about wellness, about health, lifestyle, all of that. So you can find more about that on the website. And uh, for our members, you can visit the rest of this extended cut. And I wish you all the best. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so welcome back to our extended cut, and we're hanging at Carvana with Meredith. So I want to talk about collaboration over competition, and that's really something that I can tell is a big part of your values here, is bringing women together and opening up the opportunities for collaboration. Um, what is the benefit of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a stereotype that Societally, we're pushed to this idea that women are each other's competition. Mm -hmm. and it you said it at the beginning, right? Your, yeah. Your, your experience. And I think so many women have that experience with working. Yeah. And it happens so young. And it happens, you know, with boyfriends. And then it translates into work. And it's just something that nobody advances. Mm -hmm. But when you work together, we all advance. Yeah. And when we share our knowledge, we all advance. We all benefit from mm -hmm. it. We all have individual knowledge that is valuable to you and you and everyone else and if we just choose to share it then it's reciprocated and we all move forward and so yeah I mean the question was there's room for all of us there's right? room for That's all of us what's the value, yeah, the value in collaboration that and just the, the energy that is not required mm. like it is so when they say it's like easier to smile than it is to frown yeah. it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile same thing it's so much easier to work together than it is to spend all of your energy trying right. to keep somebody down. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, absolutely. And it's the easy things, and it doesn't have to be hard, like you said, like the smile versus the frown. It's, you know, a quick compliment or saying hello to someone versus, a, you know, just walking by them. Um, so community is another core value of Carvana. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel that someone genuinely builds a supportive network with one another? Yeah, I think... The key is going into it with what can I offer versus what can I get. Mm -hmm. So when you meet somebody at a networking event or you meet somebody on 
the street, just offering, here's who I am, this is what I do, I would love to talk with you, it's interesting what you do, instead of, okay, this is who I am and this is what I can sell you, mm -hmm. or this is who I am, oh, I've seen you, you do this, can I get this from you? It's not about transactions, it's about relationships, and when you have relationships, then you build community. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that, yeah, it's not the transaction, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really powerful. Um, to grow a network, like, we're all very busy building, and that involves outreach or, you know, actually, like, taking a step outside of just getting shit done every day. Um, but what's your favorite way to strike up a conversation, whether that's virtual or in real life? I mean, I love social media, and I was never on – I hated social media before I started my business. I had to gain a digital presence because my Facebook, I think I had, you know, a dozen friends who were people who followed me that I didn't follow back. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's the wrong words for Facebook too. I don't think yeah. you have followers. I don't think you, you have, have followers friends. on Facebook. Yeah, see, this is the thing. I don't do Facebook very well. Um, but uh, it was kind of a really nice way to start because I started with a completely blank slate. Yeah. So I took it for exactly what they said online like Google, Instagram, what do you use Instagram for? And so what is social media? It's about engagement. It's about socially being social online. Mm -hmm. And so I took it at that word. And so because I never had that friend base or like, you know, like dating online, any of that, I got to just go in and say, hey, I, I don't know you in person, but I see you here and it's kind of cool. And I, so yeah. I used it exactly like that. I love that for um, creating new connection. Mm -hmm. It is, if used correctly, it's an amazing tool. Um, in person, I just, I, I just love the oddball questions. Um, you would, <laughs> you totally would. I <laughs> well, listen, you got to find who Give your people example, Okay. Okay. So. okay. so here, here, here's a great one. Um, and it's going to go back a few years, but Lord of the Rings came out and, and I, I get it. I'm aging myself a bit, but pre Game of Thrones, there was this thing called Lord of the Rings. It was this trilogy and. It had had like it was it was just super popular and, and you would talk about it the same way we talk about it, but we would talk about the different characters and whatever the journey was. And I, instead of talking about that, I would say, "So who's your favorite orc?" Oh my god, <laughs> that was my favorite question when That's people brought so it up. It's like yeah, and then you know who your people are, right? Like because yeah. then people either get it or they're like, "You're super weird." Yeah, and then you, you just get away from me. <laughs> yeah, but then you know who your people are. Yeah, just like cut 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 to the chase. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I I actually have not watched Lord of the Rings, so I feel like so I don't know the characters at all. But if you came up to me and asked me for my preference, I'd be like, uh, "What? I gotta go." Well, then again, you, the you, here's your people, right? Yeah, yeah. This is your you're the you're the you're the people who don't watch, and you are the people who yeah, watch sure, and have to enough. talk about it all the time. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so we talked about how you set your week up for success. Some kind of get shit done tips, uh, setting yourself up on the weekend before, which is amazing. Uh, but what do you do? What's your daily, like, set your day up for success? Uh, so I do a, mini a miniature version of the same. I, I, well, okay. This is the extended version. I'll give you a little bit of the extended. Yes. So every day I take my dog into the forest. Mm. This is so grounding for me. And we live in this beautiful place where I can do that. Mm. I can drive 5, 10 minutes, depending on how deep into the forest I want to get. I can drive 5, 10, 15 minutes. And I can be in a place surrounded by trees. Mm -hmm. And my dog can run free off leash. And that, I just I love, love to watch that. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah. that. And then that just sets, there's a river. It, sets, it just grounds me. And my day is just, it starts off right. Totally. So that's the first thing I do. Um, but as far as like work, I come in, I do that miniature version. So I look at that list I've made of the things I want to get done in a week. And I pick three big pieces that I want to get done today. Three things. And I write it on a post-it note, and I slap that right on my laptop so it's in my view every time I look. So every time I like decide to go on Facebook or go somewhere I'm not supposed to be that's going to waste a little bit of time, it lists it. And as I go through, I cross it out. There's so much power in crossing so something off a list. Power. Yeah, I'm with you. I do the same thing with three things on a post-it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to rewrite that post-it a few times a day. It's, it's fine. But it it's helps. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but when you can visualize it and it's sitting right there, yeah. it's really fun. 
And keeping it to three, yeah. so that you have space for all the other crap that comes out, because yeah. it always does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, my last question is, do you think women set more ambitious life goals for themselves in the company of other women? If you do, yes. why? I love this question. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely I do. I think that we are able to set more ambitious goals when we're in the company of other women, because we have women are so free and nurturing mm -hmm. like for all of societal's pressures it it has this benefit that because we've been brought up as nurturers we want to do that for each other mm -hmm. and it's something that's not emphasized for men as much yeah. for men it's it's win yes at all costs yes but for women it's take care and bolster and foster yeah. and so when we have a group of women around us yes absolutely we send more set more ambitious goals yeah. because we believe we can because we have people who say yeah you can do it you should do it mm -hmm. I love it so accountability to a community mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. sometimes when you say those things out loud uh I mean you have those people that can like help you be your own hype girl yes. right um because I know that's another thing that like with women is we tend to be so hard on ourselves and so supportive of other women mm -hmm. that the things that we say to ourselves every day we would never say out loud to a friend or to a colleague or anything like that and so I love that too of saying your goal out loud makes it real and someone else can come up with the ideas for you and like yeah that's you got yes. to own that that's yes. awesome okay tell us how we can find you uh social media all of that okay so HavanaVancouver.com at Havana Vancouver on Instagram and Facebook and I kind of dabble in Twitter but not very well do people still use Twitter sometimes I use Twitter I don't know I I, I started like yesterday oh wow that's <laughs> so <good. laughs> congratulations welcome to Twitter thanks <laughs> I still haven't put out an original tweet it's just retweets just retweets <laughs> I'll go I'll go tweet at you later. thanks uh it's been amazing to chat with you thank you for welcoming up Havana for all of us at the HPV as well just because it's honestly incredible um, I'll do an Instagram live so you've got some context to uh, there's Kennedy Park for veggies and then tomatoes and there's candy. So yeah. it's oh, a great place. <laughs> and coffee. And coffee. coffee and candy. Coffee and candy. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for tuning in to another episode of Office Hours. 